Hello, we're at Elder Scrolls Online. We've got our tankards, we've got our random fake currency, and we're here to talk to the makers of the game Elder Scrolls Online and play the new chapter, The Gold Road. Jordan's been playing it, so first initial impressions on The Gold Road, what do you think? Yeah, so obviously just, you know, very early first impressions. I had about an hour with the game, but um, early impressions are uh, really positive. I, like, my first thought was that it would make a great, like, entry chapter for uh, new ESO players coming in the game for the first time. But they are trying some new stuff, like um, spell crafting. It's not called spell crafting, but that's basically what it is. You can make your own spells, which is fantastic. And it's rather basic at the moment, but it is quite interesting, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it's a little rudimentary right now, um, but I think that was also for the purposes of uh, demonstration, just, you know. And he did say something about um, making it more, rust, more robust before launch, if I recall. But yeah. the version that I played was pretty basic. Um, but even so, yeah, it's definitely like an exciting new thing for the game, especially 10 years on. Um, that they're adding, you know, essentially switching up the gameplay meta a little bit at this stage in the game is uh, really cool. And yeah, I think it'll be something that players like. For a game that's also all about customization and playing how you want and having the character that you want as well, this is fantastic to be able to, like, make your own spells and help to craft your build and customize it even more than you can already in the game, which is insane. Yeah, it's, it's, and that's how it's being built too, is sort of like a, a role player's dream, uh, you know, a customizer's dream, just more variety, more, more player agency in their build. Um, and I could definitely see that, yeah, uh, even just from what little I experienced, it's, you are quite literally making your own spells, making your own abilities, tweaking with them uh, to fit your exact play style. Um, even visually, there's the new uh, style, uh, skill styles, yeah. which is basically like transmog, but for skills, so you can like change up the color of your abilities. And uh, I remember during the presentation, Rich showed us like a purple one yeah. that I think he described as badass. Yeah. Quote, and he's right, it's, it's pretty badass. The other interesting thing about it was there's lots of little, there's clearly lots of little quests and story tidbits uh, spattered throughout. You accidentally stumbled upon something as well, which is quite nice and interesting. Yeah, I kind of stumbled slightly off the, the beaten path and found a little inn called the Outcast Inn. And I was like, well, I got to check that out. So I wandered in, and at first it seemed like a pretty standard, you know, little tavern style inn, kind of like the one we're in right now. Yeah. And then as I started exploring more, uh, there was clearly much more going on here than I initially thought. But you went downstairs, like everything seemed normal. It seemed like a normal inn, and then you went downstairs and you discovered... There was like a, a complex, uh, little intriguing alchemy set up there. There was a skeleton um, just laying on the ground. Yeah. Um, there was uh, signs of this magical anomaly that, we, that we've talked about. Um, and so, yeah, I was intrigued by it enough that I kind of like improvised a question to uh, the studio director, Matt Fire, and uh, he shut me down really fast. He was like, I absolutely have nothing to say about that. Quite nice, because he wasn't being mean. He wasn't shutting you down in a mean way. No. He was very much more saying just like, oh, I can't talk about that. Like, Let's like, let's be like, oh, no, 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 you'll find out more about that later. In the most polite way possible, he yeah. was like, I have nothing to say about that, but you will learn more about that for sure. Like, it, it turned out to be, uh, it seems like a pretty integral part of the plot. Yeah. And so there's, that's definitely something I think players will want to check out early on, explore if they want teases into the, you know, the bigger story. So to sum up then, the Gold Road is, uh, it's another ESO chapter, but it's kind of more of the same. That is both good and both bad if you are a fan of ESO, which I don't think a lot of people are going to be coming to it fresh now. But if you're a fan of it, it's more of the same stuff. It's great. There's more customization. They're letting you play more with your character and uh, magic now and hopefully magic building and crafting and various other things. But the quests and the chapters seem quite similar. The setting's nice, but again, nothing like there are some much more varied areas in ESO. There are much more wide right different areas. This is fine, it's nice autumnal, it's great, it's a different thing, but there's not loads of different stuff here. It, but it's, it, that's not necessarily a bad thing either, is it? No, 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 I think that's fair to say too. It, it's, um, it's mostly more of the same. It, there, there is some new stuff and I think it's some cool stuff and I do think uh, the scribing system is a meaningful step forward. Um, and I think players have wanted something like that for a long time. So it's not like they're resting on their laurels at all. Yeah. But um, it's definitely not going to be a surprising update to, to longtime fans of ESO. Um, and, and like you said, that, that can be a good thing or a bad thing, just depending on how into this game you are. So it's coming out in June for consoles and PC. Um, so if this has got you interested, check it out now. I'm sure you're probably a fan of it already. But hopefully we'll have more for you in June where we cover it then.